to God. We're here to recognize that he is with us. Let's just be quiet for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you that we are able to gather in your name and to know that you are with us. Lord, we ask you by your Holy Spirit to guide and inspire us in our worship now. Draw us closer to one another and to you and equip us to serve you that we may bring glory to your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's say together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Carol. The Old Testament reading is Kings, 1 Kings, Solomon's prayer of dedication. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands towards heaven and said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father, with your mouth you have promised and with your hand you have fulfilled it, as it is today. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said, you shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your descendants are careful in all they do to walk before me faithfully as you have done. And now, God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayers and his plea for mercy. Lord my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open towards this temple night and day, this place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer your servants pray towards this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place and when you hear, forgive. 
As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people, Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name, for they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When they come and pray towards this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your own people Israel, and may know that this house I have built bears your name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Carol. So we read this psalm together. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing to enter the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion, who going through the barren valley find there a spring, and the early rains will clothe it with blessing. They will go from strength to strength and appear before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of ungodliness. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing shall the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord God of hosts, blessed are those who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Thank you, Tina. The New Testament reading is from Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 to 20. The armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in this heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the form of armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with these kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may not be given me, may be given me so that I may I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. But Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thanks, Jim. I speak in the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I was wandering around in Sainsbury's the other day, as you do, trying to decide what to get my five, nearly five-year-old granddaughter to eat, now that she's developed quite a preference and likes and dislikes. I'd just taken a funeral and had my collar on, which always speeds up shopping trips no end. You've never seen supermarket aisles clear quite so quickly. It's as effective, I would say, as Moses parting the Red Sea. And as I rounded the aisle, I bumped into a clergy colleague. The usual pleasantries were exchanged. And then he confessed, that he'd escaped to the supermarket to buy a loaf of bread as a visual aid for this Sunday's sermon. He remarked with a certain amount of angst in his voice, how can you preach about Jesus being the bread of life for five weeks and still find something new to say about it? I then suddenly understood why Roger was quite pleased that I was going to preach today. <laughs> He's right, because the lectionaries deviated from the readings of Mark to give us five consecutive readings from John, which all refer to Jesus as being the bread of life. But why did Jesus need to keep repeating this message? Were the people he was talking to especially dim? Well, I don't think that was it. I don't think they were particularly stupid but they just didn't get it. He had many followers, but they were following him for the wrong reasons, for what they could get out of it. The fringe benefits, if you like. The benefits or privileges received by merely being associated with someone or something. 
Here was a man that was performing miracles, handing out bread and fish when they were hungry. If all they had to do was say they believed, then that's what they would say, whether they meant it or not. The poor disciples, they'd been so thrilled with the popularity of Jesus and so excited at the miracles he performed. In fact, when the crowd started talking about making Jesus their king, the idea sounded pretty good to them. But so many still thought in political terms. A political messiah, a great king like David, who would restore the fortunes of Israel. But now what were they to think? Jesus had told all these people that they were following him just for what they could get out of it. He taught them that, they'd come, that he had come down from heaven to do the Father's will. And that seemed to be a claim to deity. Then he told them that they couldn't be his followers unless the Father drew them. And finally, he offended them completely by talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Disciples began to murmur. They didn't, they didn't, disciples didn't begin to murmur, but they did hear the crowd begin to murmur and complain. And then people began to drift away, just a few at first, but then the whole multitude turned their backs and walked on. This could be described as one of the most unsuccessful sermons ever preached. Jesus started with thousands and finishes with a handful. And the result of this sermon is that many of his disciples abandoned ship. Not only that, but they went back home, back to work, back to their old habits, their old ways of thinking. They not only gave up following Jesus, they gave up what he represented and what he taught. And Jesus says to them, do you wish to go away as well? And good old Simon Peter, he answers for all of them saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is a significant turning point in the ministry of Jesus. He moves closer to a self-revelation and also shifts from a public ministry to thousands to a more private training of the twelve. Same in training that he imparts to us as God's people on earth. Now, you may remember that there used to be a programme on television called You Are What You Eat. The presenter, Gillian McKeith, a particularly irritating woman, I think, would go to someone's house, spread their entire food intake for a week on the kitchen table, and then, like some formidable dictator, publicly berate them for their diet and lifestyle. And like many other people, I would gasp in amazement at what one person could eat in a week. I must admit, I never watched past this point in the programme because the next part always involved dissecting the poor victim's stool sample to show what the diet was doing to their body. It wasn't a programme to be watched by those of a delicate disposition. But in a rather grisly way, she was trying to point out that what we, we are what we eat. Our food intake determines our nutrients, our vitamins, our minerals, and con contributes to our general daily health. We all gasped at the food consumption and the dietary composition. I had to wonder if we were actually any better. See, the trouble is we're never quite sure what it is we're supposed to be doing. One day, red wine's not good for the heart. Then it is. 
the next it's eggs. They raise your cholesterol and now apparently they don't. Peanuts give you cancer. Apparently they don't do that either. And I recently met someone who'd ended up in hospital having been advised to reduce the salt intake in her diet. And the trouble was she reduced it so much that she ended up collapsing and was fitted to a drip so that they could get the salt back into her. What we're told isn't consistent and we don't know where we stand. Jesus, however, was consistent in what he said. I am the bread of life. And this was fine until he described what being the bread of life entailed and that it had nothing to do with him being a free meal ticket. But Jesus said to the crowd, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. The crowd were offended. They really didn't get it. As far as they were concerned, he was encouraging them into cannibalism. Those weren't the fringe benefits that they'd really banked on. In much the same way as dear Gillian says to her dietary subjects, look, if you're not gonna take this seriously and take my advice, there's no point going on with this. This isn't just about changing what you eat while the cameras are rolling. This is lifelong stuff. Jesus was saying to the crowds, look, if you're only in this for what you can get out of it, forget it. I'm telling you how to come back to God, change your lives and live as you want. This is eternal life stuff, which I'm giving you. Jesus has shared the benefits of following him and now the people are confronted with a moment of truth. But what are they gonna do with what Jesus has taught them? The people had a choice to make, accept it or reject it. Now, much as it pains me to say this, there is an actually a very important point to the information that Gillian, our diet dictator, is trying to get across. What you put into your body also affects your health, your well-being, your strength, your mind, and also what comes out. Eating a healthy, well-balanced diet involves commitment, perseverance, willpower, a change of life with the belief and conviction that this is a better way and worth the challenge at any cost. The disciples got the point and were willing to follow Jesus at all costs. Those who thought the price was too high jumped overboard and abandoned ship. Much the same, I suspect, for those who are left to their own devices when the cameras have packed up and gone home. But as we come together to celebrate this Holy Communion, we should also once again acknowledge that we are what we eat, praying that as we eat and drink these holy gifts, we are made one with Christ, our risen Lord, that every time we eat this bread and drink this cup. We are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. And that once fed, we can be sent out in the power of the Spirit to live and work to his praise and glory. We are what we eat. For when we feed on the body and blood of Christ, it affects our spiritual health and well-being. It affects our hearts and our minds. And it affects what comes out in the way that we live our lives and are in relationships with others. It takes commitment, perseverance, conviction and faith from us. And it presents us with many challenges and temptations in a secular world that we live in. But that's the cost. 
We are what we ate, the choice is ours. We can feast on the temporal, lifelong stuff of this world, or we can feast on the living bread that sustains us in this world and the next. It's not just our physical diet that we need to be mindful of, but our spiritual diet as well. The words of Jesus have shown us repeatedly over the last few weeks that he is the only bread that gives us true life. And we are given the opportunity of turning away from him or committing ourselves to follow him. We are what we eat. And the choice of feeding on that living bread that is Christ is not a one-off choice. We have to make that choice every day and sometimes many times in a day. It takes courage, commitment and perseverance to make this choice and the cost is sometimes high. But the fringe benefits involve walking with Christ in this world and the next. And that should give us all food for thought. Amen. Thanks, Jim. So let us profess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you, Diana. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Loving Father, you created this world with all its beauty, majesty, and power. We praise you for it. And we also recognize the many problems that arise from our interaction with nature. We bring to you at this time those people who are suffering from the effects of extreme weather, particularly the people of Haiti following the earthquake and storms, but also those affected by the fires in Greece, Italy, and America. 
and the floods in Europe and Japan. Give courage to all who suffer from these effects and strengthen those providing aid and relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for political leaders throughout the world, that they may find ways to relate to the new situation in Afghanistan. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, for all vulnerable groups, but particularly for Christians who may find themselves persecuted for their faith. Give them strength to stay firm in their beliefs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local area and especially for families enjoying the school holidays. Help them make it a time of happiness and togetherness even if they can't get away. And we ask that you will enable Roger and Julie to relax and enjoy their time away next week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are troubled in body, mind or spirit, and for those who care for them. We especially pray for Janet's mum and, and for Roger and Julie's Imogen, who has broken her wrist, and any others we know who are undergoing treatment or recovering from treatment at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, and today we remember Tina's family, and especially Oscar and his father Gavin on the death of Oscar's grandmother, Carol. And also John Cohen and his family on the death of his nephew, William, while on holiday in Jamaica. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Father, we pray for ourselves that we may put on the spiritual armour against spirit principalities and powers of this world and stand firm on the word, which is your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we are, let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you at home. Bless you.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We share together this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. 
Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There are the notices for the week ahead. Um, the call to grow meeting, which should have been on Tuesday evening, has been pushed back a week and will now be next week on Tuesday the 31st. Um, so those of you who are part of that, or those of you who wish to be part of that, um, not this week, but next week. Are there any other notices we need to give particularly this morning? No, okay, thank you. We do have some bands of marriage to publish this morning. I published the bands of marriage between William James Dummer of this parish and Fiona Joy Murphy, also of this parish, and with a qualifying connection to St. George's Bickley. This is for the second time of asking if any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony. You are to declare it. Let's pray for Bill and Fiona now in their preparation for marriage. Heavenly Father, we pray now for Billy and Fiona as they prepare to be married. May they know the blessings of your love now and throughout their life together. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who commanded us to love one another as he loves us. Amen.
Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and with all whom we love, now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. It sort of brightened up a little out there as well. <laughs>